Okay, I think I'm recording. All right, let's check this out. We got a live blitz game, five minutes with five second increments, which hopefully will allow me to chat without running out of time. And I've changed the color of my squares, going with the whole blue and white theme, because it's birdie. But I will need a game. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. I am the white pieces against, I guess I won't mention the player's name, and, um, okay, pay attention. Uh, this is Russ with strategyfiend.com, by the way, and uh, let's just do this. So the idea here is if he captures, if I so choose, I could recapture by bringing the queen out to a4 with check and retaking with the queen. Um, a lot of people don't like that. They prefer to play um, e3. So I'll do that. And this is sort of like a queen's gambit accepted um, without the infamous... Um, tempo loss, but then we end up with this sort of thing here, which is why I don't really like to play this sort of style, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, because, yeah, mostly I don't know what I'm doing. So, that is a bit of a slowdown. But I do like the looks of that long white diagonal, so I'm just going to duck over there and forego any challenging of this uh, this queenside setup that uh, that black has gained. Well, I'm still challenging it, but at its base. But in terms of challenging it this way, um, you know, obviously B4 is a problem. So rather than get monkeying around with all that, maybe I should even really consider playing A3 before B4 becomes a problem. Okay, so if I take that knight, his pawn structure is pretty, pretty nice, actually. So I won't be doing that. Um, in fact, what will I be doing? She's got four pawns over there. I can't play d4 or I'm just going to be molested on the queen side with pawns. Um, if he captures, I guess I intend to recapture with my pawn. Still giving him a... F that's four on three. It's kind of a weird setup. Uh, like I said, I don't really typically play this way. I'm going to jump. Do I want to let him mess up my pawns? Yeah, I think this is okay. What if he comes here? Do I have a spot? What exactly is he doing? Alright. What if he plays... Okay, if I play d4, he plays e5. I got nothing. So I can't do that. Can I? I take, he takes, I vanish into the sunset. And I got 3 minutes and 25 seconds to his 414. He has the advantage of, I think, knowing what he's doing. Quite useful. You know, let's, uh, let's, let's kick this. And eliminate any sort of B4 where I get chased into fixing his pawns. to if I capture here this actually might be good this is a little reminiscent of like uh, Rui Lopez um, type setup sort of but I'm not going to do it OK, 
Okay, so putting a little pressure on my epon. I'm just gonna go ahead and defend that. I don't know about my D pawn here. It looks like it's facing a it's facing a gauntlet of pawns and queens. And what am I missing? That looks like a free pawn. How's that not a free pawn? Because the queen comes and chases me to g4, and it's totally a free pawn. Okay, I take queen e7, I just play a 4 That's a free pawn. That's the way I would have gone. So, it's even freer than free. It's doubly free. Why is that a bad idea? This looks like a bad idea. I guess I'm just gonna back. Open my queen d2. Okay, he wants to. We knew that was coming eventually. Glad that knight's out of there. So he can get a pass pawn out of that business there. So I'm gonna play here. Double edged move here, protecting the e4 pawn for many shenanigans and threatening to steal that c pawn after an exchange on the b file which would be doing me a huge favor actually if you play b three right now. I take he takes, I take with the queen. Suddenly my d pawn is free to uh, roam and oh, I see if I take I lose the bish up there so I gotta prep this move. So he's probably gonna castle now or he's gonna do something about that c pawn. I really think his queen belonged on the e file to be long, to begin with, but it's a little bit sketchy with his king still there, so um, can see why he wouldn't want to. But maybe now c6 with the queen, or maybe just bishop a6 would be better. Does it? I don't think so. I take, he comes in, I take, he comes in. I think this is fine. I still have bishop b2. Attacking the queen. Just shaping up to be all right for me for some position that I didn't really was not too terribly familiar with, but I guess you know the board never changes, except in this case where it changed to blue and white, as opposed to my traditional brown and off white. he going to do? So I'm guessing that I'm going to take this pawn and he's going to play rook c8 and then um, then what? 
and what indeed. I could pin the knight and take the pawn with my rook, threatening his bishop. Looks intriguing. But he's going to castle, so it's not going to really help. So I'm just going to do that. And then I think after he plays rook c8, I will do it this way. I haven't ruled out an exchange sacrifice on b4 here. That's just a free bishop, right? So this game's probably over, except I only got 40 seconds left, so there's plenty of time for me to return the favor error-wise. But I have to say, I kind of like the way this shaped up. I'll have to uh, get some feedback from people on how I could have been um, terrorized even further. Um, I was thinking I could grab the knight there, but that doesn't exactly work, does it? Uh, let's just let's just get out of here. I'm gonna get trapped. No, knight c six queen freedom. I still do have this counterattack in my back pocket, as they say. That knight is gonna get taken. By the way, so. On the, uh, pretty quick here, as a matter of fact. Just gotta get this bishop out of the way. Ooh, that was clever. I like that. I have 15 seconds. I should've just gone down here. Alright. So the knight's not gonna get taken. Uh, the idea was that I could move the pawn with tempo, hitting the queen, and then opening up this line right here. And uh, I thought that bishop was knight was doing something. What was the knight doing? Protecting that pawn. We're good. So now I should be able to get some sort of something happening over here. I need to get my knight out of the way to get my queen involved. And I'm super running out of time. Not just regular running out of time, super running out of time. Get my queen to g4, get some kind of a mate threat happening. G4 is not going to work unless he gets off that diagonal. And what happened there? All right, what can I discover here? I have 16 seconds left, but I'm getting five seconds after every move, so. Uh, okay, I'll discover that. So there, there we go. Bam! I didn't think you saw that coming at all. So, um, not bad for my first adventure into unknown territory. I do normally play, um, like I said, let me pull this up here. I should thank my opponent. Um, how do I control this? Okay, I normally like I said, come this way and recapture here. I obviously chose this way and immediately regretted it after he defended that pawn because um, yeah, I kind of avoid that line of Queen's Gambit and uh, to the point that I don't even remember what it's called at the moment. It's called the 
I'll leave it in the comments so I don't have to look it up. So went with the bishop. I think I talked about that just because of the weak bishop or the weak pawn. I'm sorry on c6. Seemed like a good place for the bishop, and this just didn't seem like there was any future there. Um, so I had the option of doing this. Oops, that would have been silly. And mouse is unhappy. All right, there's no guarantee he would have taken there, but so this doesn't look bad. And we've got this four on three here. Um, where, um, if memory serves, I can just put this pawn here and nothing happens here. But I believe I'm supposed to have a 4 on 3 over here if this is a Rui really Lopez type endgame. And, um, what is the story? Why do I not? Um, I don't know. I have to look into that. Because. Just not coming to me. Uh, theory is not my strong point, in case you hadn't picked up on that. Um, so, I don't know, I think this looks okay, except that the pawn, am I down a pawn? Four, three, four, yeah, I'm down a pawn. Oh yeah, because I sacked one in the beginning, okay. That's why. Because I just sacked a pawn. So, interesting. Now let me look at this from another perspective. Did I get compensation for that pawn? Well, it's not the way the game happened, so let's revert back to... Uh, back up again. I thought this was coming. Which would have put both of these pieces here and forced me here. So that I didn't block my bishop, right? I didn't have any place else to go. Or it would have forced me to play this, but then this was coming, theoretically, potentially. And, I mean, this is kind of a mess for, for black, for sure. But if I want to hang out of that pawn, and I do, he doesn't win it, so I don't think that's worth it for him to go to. So back to the game, he played here, which I don't know what punch that packed. I guess it skewered, you know, it sort of x-rayed the rook, um, limiting what I could do after b4. And he played it right away. So that was his plan all along. Okay. And now he just gets ready to castle. I do this. He does that. And this was all fine and dandy. I actually kind of thought he would ca capture here. Um, and I capture... And there's still an opportunity for an exchange sacrifice here, which probably might be worth it. Let's say he castles here. I take. Oh no, I can't because of the bishop. So there's not that possibility, as it turns out, after all. So forget about that line of thinking. He captures with the pawn. I capture with the queen, and we knew this was coming. We talked about it. Oh, and the game was over here because you forgot about the bishop. Okay, so. Um, let's say he doesn't castle and he just does something like that. Now let's evaluate it from here. So I've got two center pawns and a queenside pawn. I don't know if you, I mean, I got a pass pawn on the queen file. Um, I'm going to have this diagonal. I've got pretty decent control over this diagonal. I would say I have compensation for the pawn. He's got no attack. He's got a castle. His pieces are okay, but these pawns aren't really 
coordinated. He can come up here with this one to defend, but not so easily because this rook is a little out of place for that sort of activity, and this bishop can't really help out. Um, okay, I, I can play. I can play queen. Oh, I'm sorry, queen uh, pawn. I'm losing my mind here. D4, D5. And have a little pawn chain coming this way, backed up by the bishop. I can even eventually play f3 and get the bishop out. Maybe even exchange it off if I, if, if I hate it, since it would be the bad bishop. But it's pretty easy to get outside this chain from here, so I don't see why I'd really even need to. So, yeah, I'm still down a pawn. I think I have compensation. Chime in. I'd like to hear your thoughts and uh, where... Um, I maybe just totally missed something that my opponent could have done to uh, punish me for allowing him to uh, to get into um, this position. Let me get to it here, and uh, and don't forget to tell me what it's called. All right, thanks for watching, and I am going to see if the sound worked out pretty good, and then post it, and I will see you next time. Adios.